My sister ruined my life because our parents favor me over her. I, 25 female, have always been in competition with my sister, 27 female, since I can remember. I was a baby born after a miscarriage our mom had, so my parents were very happy and shifted their attention away from my sister and onto me. I want to clarify that I never took joy in this, but I knew I was favored over my sister due to unfair circumstances. I tried to connect with her growing up, because I considered her a really cool person, but she always seemed uninterested, which only made my parents chew her out for hurting my feelings. Obviously, that only caused her to hate me more. When I turned 15, I completely stopped engaging with her. My parents didn't push for us to be friends either and kept their attention on me, which has always bugged me, because who wants to be cuddled and surveilled 24-7? Anyway, things went alright for me and I eventually got myself into a good college, but my parents offered to pay for everything – food, rent, school supplies, etc. – since I wanted to move out of their house. I wanted to be independent, so I declined. But when my sister heard of this, she was understandably mad, as they had refused to pay for anything, and told her she needed to learn responsibility by paying for her own things. She blew up at my parents, but mostly at me for stealing away the attention of our parents her entire life and making her miserable. I tried to explain that I agreed that they were bad parents and that she deserved better, but she just told me to shut my whole mouth and that she didn't need my sympathy. My parents forced her to apologize and threatened to cut contact if she didn't. I agree that was harsh, but I understand how frustrated she must have felt her whole life, so I don't hold it against her. Since she didn't have much of a support system other than them, she sent me a super long apology over text and tried to mend things, though it was obvious she only did it just because she was forced to. During the first few months of college, I ended up meeting a guy named John, 26 male, and we started dating shortly after. Everything just clicked, and it seemed like I knew my every thought. At my 20th birthday party, I introduced him to my family and everything seemed to go well. I kept my family and John separate because my parents were always super nosy and my sister seemed extremely judgmental when I would bring company. This time around, she was super friendly though. Looking back, my sister was definitely a little too touchy with him, but I chalked that up to her just wanting to overcompensate to mend our relationship further. After I graduate, John ended up proposing and I said yes, as I was head over heels in love. We decided on having a wedding once we had secured good paying jobs, and things seems to be perfect between us. Flash forward to three weeks ago, and I got the most gut-wrenching message of my life. It was from my sister, telling me that she was pregnant and it was John's. In addition to that, she sent screenshots of messages and explicit images between the two. They professed their love for each other multiple times, and John said that my sister was the best he'd ever had in his life, despite him saying the same to me. It had been going on for majority of the years we'd been together. To say I sobbed my eyes out would be an insulting understatement. I asked her how she could do this to me, and she replied, Now you know how it feels to get your whole life ripped away from you. He loves me more, and I'll make sure he leaves your sorry butt for me and our baby. Go cry to our parents and see if I care, and then blocked me before I could respond. I screenshotted a lot of it before she did. The bastard I used to call my fiancé came home hours later from work and saw me crying. He begged to know what was wrong and tried to comfort me, but I blew up at him and kicked him out. It's my apartment that we share. He admitted to the affair over text and said he loved me but loved my sister too and had to be there for his child, so the engagement is off. His brother came and took all his stuff, and he hasn't even given me an apology for any of this. I've been crying for almost a month straight, and all I want to do is beat the living crap out of my sister. But I know I would go to jail, especially since she's pregnant. I used to look up to her so much, and I thought that things were finally looking up. But then she decided to backstab me, and for what? Mommy and daddy's love that I never wanted in the first place? I barely even liked my parents either because of their behavior. But I'm the villain? For Pete's sake, you would think an almost 30-year-old woman would seek therapy or talk to me directly about her resentment. But no, she had to sabotage my life for the sake of hers being awful. I can't even feel any sympathy for her anymore, and I just want to go away forever. I have extremely alarming thoughts, but I've just resorted to locking myself in my room all day since I work remotely, and it's calmed down in the last few days. My sister unlocks me occasionally to keep rubbing it in my face that he chose her over me, sending picture of them together and her baby bump. I've already blocked her to make sure she leaves me alone. She's a grown woman for God's sake, gloating like a child. If he's willing to cheat on me for so long, I feel incredibly bad for their baby. 
but definitely not for her. I haven't told my parents yet, and I'm unsure how to even go about it. They'd 100% take my side, but they aren't good people, so I don't want their crappy support. I haven't told my friends, and I don't have a therapist. I want to tell someone, but this is so incredibly humiliating that I can't bring myself to do much but cry and drown myself in work. I saw myself growing old with him and having my sister as a bridesmaid, like I really thought would grown past our issues, but now they're together and left me to fend for myself. Again, this is so goddamn humiliating, but I need to talk to someone. Now for the top comments. Your sister just destroyed her whole life to mess with yours. You will move on from this. Her? She's stuck with a man she doesn't love, just the man she used, that she knows is a cheater, and she's bringing her child into this. She will never be able to get past what she just did to herself. Is she going to brag about how she met him to her kid? His family knows who you are. This will follow her. Her whole life she has made about you, her childhood, her adult years, her future child's life. The fact that you never blamed your sister for being mad at you shows how emotionally mature and compassionate you are. One day you are going to be married to a faithful man that you love more than you thought possible, and you will look at the kids you share, and you will know that your sister just gave you the biggest gift. And you will know it's something that she can never have because she chose to be hateful to someone who didn't do anything to deserve it. Block them. Change your number if you have to. Tell whoever you need to the truth and tell mutual friends who don't want to know anything about them. And never answer him when he reaches out with regret, because he will. For sure, OP listen to this. She is and will always be miserable. Until she is happy with herself, she will never be happy with anyone. When her kid misbehaves, it will be her fault for making her go behind your back and get pregnant by your ex fiance When it cheats on her, it will be your fault. All of her choices will always be your fault. When she's still not happy after trying to ruin your life, it will be your fault. She did not make these choices out of love or respect or kindness, and therefore she will never have real love, respect, or kindness in return. I feel horribly sorry for the kid, either going to be neglected or egregiously spoiled. One day you will realize the giant gift she gave you, preventing you from marrying that total Ahab. You will be happy again, and it will make her even more miserable. She's already really miserable. No person actually happy in the relationship reaches out to someone to say how great it is. Honestly, you should thank her the next time she texts before you block her. Get under her skin once. Thank you for saving me. If he was tempted by you, it just means that he would have been tempted by someone else down the line. And I'm not stuck with someone who could be disloyal to me. I'm not tied to him by children, so I have a fresh, clean slate. I hope you two are so happy together, and then block. I'd also mention that his lack of loyalty is her problem now, and to think about that every time he goes to the gym, works late, or fails to show up for something, because it's only a matter of time. Good luck eventually being a single mom. Every single person in your life is trash. Let them all go. Get therapy, move away, have your own family somewhere else your own friends, another boyfriend, everything. Just get away. Find a therapist now. You really need one. Don't be ashamed. You didn't ask for this. Your sister is mentally ill. Trust me, if you find someone else, she'd try to seduce them too. This happiness won't last long when she sees you happy again with someone else. Trust me, if you find someone else, she'd try to seduce them too. This would be my fear as well, that she would try with every future partner till the day she passed. And even if she couldn't seduce them, that she'd just lie and say she did just to mess with Opie. Sis and John planted a forever seed of doubt. Last story. Woman obsessed with my husband try to break up my marriage, got hit by karma. 16 years ago, my husband and I were married with a one-year-old little girl. We were high school sweethearts that went to different schools, met junior year and made it work. Where we went to different school, I met John through my husband, but never met Sarah or Cindy. Still haven't met them in real life. One night, my daughter and I spent the night at my sister's house with her two kids because her husband was out of town for work and she was heavily pregnant and needed help the night he would be gone. That night, my husband's best friend John, who has been friends since second grade, came over to our house to hang out with him. Next day, my husband told me John's ex-girlfriend Sarah and her best friend Cindy came over to see John. John was already with a new girlfriend, Sandy. And that while John slept with Sarah in our spare bedroom, Cindy had tried to sleep with my tipsy husband. He kicked them out like 2 a.m. My husband turned Cindy down, but apparently she had always had a crush on my husband. For a year afterward, she would call his phone. 
didn't know how she got his number, but changed his number twice. She kept getting it. Calling, playing music, saying lewd things. Even sending emails saying how our daughter needs to be put down so she didn't end up being a witch like me. That they would jump me and bash my daughter's head in if they saw us out alone. Kept sending updates on where I went, ask how my doctor's appointment was, how his tour name was. Creepy stalker's tough. For the longest time, I refused to leave the house without my husband because I was seriously concerned they would hurt my daughter. For a year, I felt trapped in my home. I vividly remember being three weeks postpartum after an emergency C-section with our second child and just holding my baby and sliding down the wall to sit and cry. Because she had called again. It was two or three times a week she would call. She always blocked her number and sent the emails from an anonymous email address. For a while, I thought maybe my husband was talking to her. How else would she be getting his new numbers? I lost so much faith in him. I know he was mad about the situation and would scream into the phone to leave us alone. I saved every call log, email, and recorded what I could. I sent an email to her throw away and said I knew who she was and that I was going to the police for harassment. Spoiler alert, I already tried, but there wasn't enough evidence because she blocked her number and nothing traced back to her. However, we were 20, she was 19, and it scared her enough to leave us alone. Three months of peace later, and his best friend John came over with Sandy for dinner. Sandy and I were friends, and would talk about everything with the crazies, as we called them. She asked how everything with Cindy was going, and I asked her how she forgave John for sleeping with Sarah. She lost it because she didn't know. He lies, says he didn't, and that my husband got it wrong, that they were just talking. Sandy didn't believe him, and then John screamed at me. This is why I kept giving Cindy's number. She would be a better match for him. My husband threw John out, and they yelled at each other outside for a while. Turns out, John was upset my husband wasn't going out and partying with him. John thought it was me not allowing my husband to go. But that wasn't true. My husband didn't want to go. He preferred to be home with me and our daughter. The few times I went out with John, I practically had to kick him out of the house to get him to go. John couldn't understand it was my husband who didn't want to go clubbing. My husband has never been a clubbing guy. He hates people and loud music. He kicked John out of our lives that night and husband hasn't spoken to him since. We changed his number one last time and never had any other issues. For her part, Cindy got some serious karma. I couldn't help but laugh when I learned she married a guy a year later, had a kid and got cheated on and then he left her for another woman while she was pregnant. I usually don't enjoy others' misfortunes. However, after the hell she put us through, especially during my pregnancy with our second child, I laughed when I heard. For John, he married Sandy, has two kids now, and tried to get back in contact with us 13 years ago after he had his first kid. He wanted to apologize because apparently after having his own kid, he realized how screwed up he was, doing what he did. He called my husband's parents because they still had a landline at a time. My in-laws had already been told years earlier what happened and that under no circumstances were they to give out our numbers to him. So we went to my in-laws, and my husband called him back and told him to never contact our family again. Side note, when husband called John back, we found out Cindy wasn't following us like we thought. John would tell her where we were going. So screw you, John. You and that psycho Cindy. I can't believe Sandy married him. She's very forgiving, definitely. No. She just believed him that nothing happened between him and his ex that night. He convinced her it was a misunderstanding. Did you not hear him confess that he was feeding your information to a woman who threatened your child's life? That seems like something that would make you run. Sandy had already walked out of the house before he screamed that at me. I have no idea what she knew. You didn't tell afterwards? I called her the next day, other than, hey, I didn't get to speak. She kept saying my husband was wrong, that John would never cheat on her, and refused to listen to anything I tried to say and then hung up on me. I haven't spoken to her since. That was 15 years ago. Sandy is the biggest freaking idiot. Perpetual doormat. I'm afraid she's being abused. When we knew them, Sandy always wore the pants of the relationship. What she said went, John was a master manipulator, but she always got her way, no matter what, from what we saw. John only had his grandmother, and Sandy had a huge family. They moved because her parents did, so they would be close to them. So I don't think she was a beast. Her dad would have already unalived John if he had. And John's grandmother moved with them. I honestly have no idea what their marriage is like. We blocked other social media after we joined Facebook, and they sent friend requests. 
her they moved four states away about 10 years ago. Well, the end of this story was satisfying to read, I can tell you. I'm sorry she ruined the first few years with your babies. It still affected me for years. I was always worried about taking both kids out by myself. I waited for my husband, mom, or mother-in-law to go with me. It sucked big time, and I still had anxiety when I went into crowded places with my kids. A few years ago, I got my permit to carry, so I don't worry anymore. My husband and I met through his ex-girlfriend. I was dating a guy she knew and was friends with on Facebook. She showed my now husband my pic and sent me a message saying he thought I was cute. His ex had a tendency to introduce him to acquaintances of hers, knowing they wouldn't work and he would come back to her afterwards. This time that didn't happen. We hit it off right away, and from that point forward it was always us being exclusive. Flash forward a couple of months, she invites us to dinner with her and her boyfriend. I was excited to finally meet her. The entire time she completely ignored me. Instead, wanting to discuss their relationship and how much fun they had, with me and her boyfriend witnessing this. It got to the point I wanted to climb across the table. Afterwards, I told my boyfriend if he wanted to stay friends with her, I understood. I wanted to be neutral since they had years-long friendship. To his credit, he stopped talking to her. Three days ago, she sent a message to my husband on Facebook and he blocked her. We have been together 10 years, married for 8, 